Sup gamers, these are the top 5 competitive decks you can build for $100 in the Vanguard standard format. So the criteria I'm using this video is I'm wanting to build decks that you can get all the core of it and all the important cards for $100 or less. This isn't counting staples like effect triggers, uh, effect sentinels, and over triggers. Mainly because some of those fluctuate a lot of the time, they get reprinted a lot, so a lot of people should have them, but if it's of a new nation, then you might have to add a bit more than what I'm showing here. And I've also tried to do a bunch of different nations for this one. First up for Dragon Empire is Bob Sagra. The main expensive card in this deck is Trick Moon. So whenever you call Trick Moon from the drop zone to a back row center rear guard, then you can counter charge one. And whenever Trick Moon boosts, it gives plus 10k power to the boosted unit for each arms card on your Vanguard. Which leads us to our main grade 3, which is Bob Sagra. So whenever you arm Bob Sagra, you get to Soul Charge 1 and revive a grade 1 or less from your drop zone. And while she has two arms on her, then you can Soul Blast 2, retire both of your opponent's front row rear guards, and she gains plus 1 crit. So through this combination, we have really good resource management through Counter Charge and Soul Charge. We are able to blow up the opponent's front row consistently consistently through Bof Sagra's effect. Bof Sagra also gaining a crit makes the Vanguard more threatening. And then Trick Moon adds a ton of power whenever it boosts. And if you have multiple of them in play, then you can start really boosting up your board. So these arms cards, we're using three of the spear. So whenever you equip it, you get to draw a card and then you can equip another card from your hand that turn. And then while it's equipped, your Vanguard has plus 10k power during your turn. This is our primary right arm we are trying to equip. We also have a secondary one with the sword, so you can play it with Soul Blast 1. Your Vanguard is plus 10k during your turn, and at the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacked, you can Cab Blast 2, get rid of the arm, and deal a damage to your opponent if they have 4 or less damage. So we mostly utilize the spear throughout the early game to keep drawing cards and keep equipping more arms cards throughout the turn, and then we utilize the sword later in the game to try to win from that. For our left arms, our primary one is the shield, so you can play it with Counterblast 1, and whenever your opponent attacks your vanguard, you can once per turn use the shield as an extra 10k shield for that battle. So this just gives Bob Saga a way to gain extra defense during the opponent's turn, and be able to more easily block attacks. And because 10k shield is a very weird number to guard, because unless you're playing effect draws, then you don't have really 10k shield values. The shield is really good at stopping those like awkward number attacks sometimes. And then our last arms we're playing is the new axe. So while the axe is equipped, your vanguard has basically two card guard restrict. So whenever your vanguard attacks, if they if the opponent wants to guard, they have to guard a two or more cards. And then at the end of your turn, you can cam blast one and remove the axe and then equip a left arms from your drop zone to your vanguard. So due to the nature of the shield not having an effect during our turn, we can utilize the axe as a free way to equip. And then at the end of the turn, we're able to remove the axe and get our shield back. The deck just naturally has more offense because of that. And then the other new cards we got from set 12 was Vylord. So Vylord can overdress on top of Trick Moon. It can't be chosen by the opponent's effects. And then whenever you overdress it, you can counterblast one, choose two arms from your drop zone, equip one of them, and put the other into soul. And then it also has dress boost, but instead of giving plus 10k to the thing it boosts, you give plus 5k to your front row for each armed card. So if you have multiple Vylords in play, then you can start gaining a ton of power off of that, and your board will just naturally hit a bigger threshold. And then the other new card from set 12 was Divistia. So whenever you play it, you Soul Blast 1, check top 7, reveal up to 1 dress boost and 1 arms card from among them, add 1 to your hand and discard the other. Whenever it attacks a grade 3 or greater unit, if your vanguard has 2 or more arms, it gains plus 10k power. So this card just gives us the search ability we need to find our Trick Moons, our Vyloids, whatever missing arms we're needing, helps us set up super easily, and then it's just a 20k beater later on for free. So yeah, here's the deck list. As of the release of this video, the 50 card change is live now. All of your decks will have 50 card main decks and 4 card ride decks still. Which segues us into the sponsor of today's video, which is 50 cards. If you need any vanguard supplies, any singles, or you want to buy splits, or even potentially cases, 
of future sets, then you can check out 50 cards down in the description. If you use code Flare, then you get a discount off and it helps support me and the channel. Next up is Dark States, and I am choosing Vehemence Bruce for this one. At the beginning of your battle phase, if all of your units have Diabolos in the name, then you are in final rush till the end of your opponent's turn. And if your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, then you're in final burst. Whenever Vehemence Bruce attacks, you can Cablast one, stand a column, and those units get plus 5k power. That's only if you're in final burst. So some key pieces we are playing in here. A main attack extender is Geno. So whenever your Vanguard attacks, and you are in final burst, you can Soul Blast 2, choose a rearguard in the same column as it for every two damage you have and stand them. And if you stood two or more rearguards, they gain plus 5k power. And then at the end of your turn, if you are in final rush, you can put Geno in the soul and add any normal unit from your soul to your hand. So Geno is a very strong attack extender that makes Vehemence boost from a four attack deck to a five attack deck. And also has the utility of being able to go in the soul and add anything back to your hand. So it can add itself back to hand. You can add perfect guards if you soul charge them, or you can add any other piece you potentially need back into your hand. Our other main grade 2 is Jamil. So while you're on final burst, he has plus 10k power and plus 5k shield. And then whenever you call him, if your vanguard is Vehemence Bruce, you can Cablast 1, Soul Charge 1, and call any grade 3 or less unit from your soul to rear guard. So Jamil just is a 10k shield, a 20k beta, but also just helps set up our board easier, where we have to commit less cards from our hand in order to build a board out of it. Very strong utility card. One of our big power plays is Derek. So whenever you become Final Rush, which becoming Final Burst also counts, then he gets the skill that during the battle that he boosts, he has plus 5k power and also gains two card guard restrict. And then at the end of the turn, you retire him. So this is really strong because we're able to double up on this effect because we're able to restand columns. So we're able to boost with this multiple times in a turn and just gives the deck the pressure it needs to be able to close out games. With Jamil, we also have two other cards that gain shield. We have Trish, which while you're in Final Rush has plus 5k power and plus 5k shield. So it's another 10k shield, but also a 13k beta if we need it. And we also have Nile, where if your Bruce Vanguard has been hit this turn, then whenever you guard with this, it has plus 15k shield which makes it a 20k shield. We also have the budget for effect fronts. Between the effect fronts and Nile, we have seven 20k shields in the deck. And with Trish and Jamil, we have seven 10k shields in the deck. And if that wasn't enough, we also have Stephanie. So while you're in Final Rush, all of the units in the same column as it has plus 5k power. So because Vehemence Bruce puts you in Final Rush till the end of the opponent's next turn, Whatever Stephanie is behind will have plus 5k during the opponent's turn, even your Vanguard. So your Vanguard can be 18k base, and you have a ton of extra shield value from all of these other cards. Which just gives the deck a ton of beefiness to be able to survive through the game to try to beat down the opponent through Vehemence Bruce and Geno as much as possible. So that is it for Bruce. I think Bruce is a very underrated deck right now. I don't think it's super meta competitive, but... I don't think it's terrible. I think if you know what you're doing, you can still do pretty well with this deck. Next up is Keta Sanctuary, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but Minerva's on here. Minerva's actually gone down in price quite a bit over time. It got really expensive for a second, but then it came started coming back down. And now you can build this deck for relatively cheap for the most part. Our first grade 3 is Minerva, so if you have a grade 3 Regalia in your soul, your front row has plus 5k power during your turn. Act once per turn, you can Soul Blast 1, look at the top card of the deck, and you can either put it in the soul or leave it on top. And then at the end of the battle that it attacked a grade 3 or greater Vanguard, you can Cablast 1, Soul Blast 3, and then discard a Genesis card from your hand and restand Minerva with minus 1 drive. So Minerva is like the primary core engine of this deck. It does everything it wants to do because we want to enable multi-attacks through Chamomile. Whenever you Soul Blast out Chamomile, then you can Cablast 1 and call it to rearguard. So we have Minerva's top checking effect in order to scout for either non-triggers, so we have a higher chance to drive check triggers, or we could scout for pieces we want in soul, like Chamomile, and try to fuel our deck that way. And because of Chamomile Minerva, there's really insane combo plays this deck can do, and it can get really insane. The other newest card that made this deck really good was Rerolim. 
So whenever it's placed on rearguard other than during battle phase, and your vanguard's a genesis, you can cat blast one, soul blast one, draw a card, and then call a unit that's the same grade or less as your vanguard. And if you can't, then you discard it. At the end of the battle this boosted, you put two units of the same column as this into your soul, and then add any genesis card from your drop zone to your hand. So this card is pretty absurd. You're essentially able to just dig deeper into your deck and try to find the pieces you need. But the really strong part is that it puts itself and another thing in the same column as it in the soul. And then you get to add something from your drop zone to your hand. What you can put back in the soul is your chamomiles and just get more attack extension that way. And then you can also add anything from your drop zone back to your hand. So you can add Minerva's, Chamomile's, Melissa's, or Angelica's, or Cider's to your hand. There's a lot of options you have with it. So this is just a really powerful setup card that we have. The other really powerful card this deck has is Thassus. Thassus was the reason why this deck was really expensive for a while, but the card has gotten quite a bit cheaper, and all the pieces around it are also just like not that expensive anymore. So whenever you call it to Rearguard, if you have a Genesis Vanguard, you look at top three and put a card from among them in the soul and, and bottom deck the rest. And then at the end of the battle that it attacked, if you have a Minerva Vanguard, you Soul Blast 1 and retire this unit. And then you can put a card from your hand to drop zone in the soul. If you choose a card from your hand, then you get to draw a card. So this, again, is another really strong setup card, and it's a potential attack extender, because this card is very good at finding your chamomiles and putting them in the soul. And then it can also soul blast the chamomile back out and call them back out. And then in the process, you also still put chamomiles in the soul. This card is very absurd at setting up this deck. Here is the deck log for this specific list. We have Cadwalla and Painkiller Angel as additional ways to attack extend. And then we have Apple Witch Cider just as a free way to have an additional 15k shields in the deck. And then yeah, Angelica just sets everything up for Minerva easily as well. Next up for Brantgate, it is B Heroes. I just made a more in-depth deck profile about this list on my channel a couple weeks ago. If you are interested in seeing more about this deck, then check it out there. So you utilize the bases in order to scout B Heroes into your order zone. And then the bases can utilize the cards in your order zone in order to gain additional effects. So the base is able to call something from your base and it can also guard with stuff in there as well. And this deck became really strong through the addition of set 13 and a mass Dawn Gear, being able to give you multiple bases each turn and consistently be able to have three bases set up turn three. And then we have Broad Felvis, which can also put the cards scouted in your base into your hand while also setting up more bases during the battle phase. This deck is a high attack extension toolboxy deck and has a lot going for it going into this next format. Again, if you want to see more about it, check out my B Hero video down in the description below. Now the last deck and the strongest deck on this list is for Stoakea, and it's Mushi King. A lot of people are expecting Mushi King to be one of the best decks going in the Worlds format, and there's a reason why. So if you don't know how Mushi King works, whenever you ride on top of your starter, it does not have the draw effect if you go second. Instead, you get a set order that allows you to set three different types of set orders from your deck. So you can set a throwing, a pinching, and a hitting set order from your deck. Now there's a bunch of different kinds, but the ones we're using is the grade three hitting, the grade two pinching, and the grade one throwing. These set orders then give different effects to your Mushi King cards depending on which ones they are. So for grade one, we are using the throwing one. So that one will essentially allow you to swing for 23k each turn and also give throwing beetle the potential to drive check as well. We're using the pinching grade two order, which makes them be able to attack for 20k each turn and also give a stun effect where you prevent opponent's rear guards from being able to restand. But the primary thing that makes it strong is the hitting grade three, which is stag beetle. So stag beetle will be swinging for 23k and then it also gains the effect that at the end of the battle that it attacked, you counterblast one and stand the unit that attacked and it gains drive minus two. But if you discard another copy of this set order, then he gains drive plus one, which in total will be drive minus one. So it'll swing for 23 twin drive, restand, and then swing for 23 single drive, which doesn't seem amazing on paper, but because of Japanese beetle with the throwing order, we're able to be super aggressive early on and use stag beetle as a way to close out games 
very quickly and try to out pressure them out of the game. The other order we are playing is Ye Wandering Souls. So you play it by discarding an order from your hand and then your vanguard gains plus one drive for the turn. So now our restanding vanguard is swinging for three drive and then two drive, which just gets really crazy. So the deck just hits a lot harder and faster than a lot of decks in the format right now. And because of the nature of how slow some of the decks are, Mushi King has a really nice time going against those decks to try to beat them down. And then we utilize Burrow Mushroom, so you can put it in the soul and call two plant tokens. So then it turns our beaters into really high unguardable numbers early on. Turns out 20k's into 25's, turns out 23's into 28's. So it just makes it really hard to guard the early game because of that. And then with the 50 card change, it's kind of hard to figure out what you want to put in there. I think a really cool one is the Dragon Tree Bowl. That allows you to add orders from your drop zone back to your hand, so you can utilize these additional effects more through that. And then you can more consistently get that extra drive check from Ye Wandering Souls. So yeah, here is the deck list. This deck is going to be pretty strong for Worlds format. We can very much expect to see it doing Worlds. And with that, that is it. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts on some good budget decks you can play right now, or how you would change these decks up. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one.